Hi, welcome everyone. I'm so glad you're here today. This session is for you if you're a business or technology leader and you're wondering what is the real business value of using artificial intelligence and machine learning in your companies. And you want to know the kind of questions you should be asking yourselves and your teams to ensure you're working towards success. My name is Chung, and in this session, I'll share how Amazon applies machine learning to transform its customer experiences by walking you through several use cases from Amazon.com. Now, most of you are probably not running a global online retail business like Amazon, but I hope that these stories would help you get started on thinking about where your customers might benefit from machine learning. I'll also share some insights and lessons Amazon teams have learned along the way, and I hope that you'll walk away with some actionable insights that you can apply right away. So let's start by level setting on the strategic context for Amazon and its relationship with its customers. As you know, Jeff Bezos is a founder and CEO of Amazon. Uh, and from the early days at Amazon, Jeff stated that Amazon's mission is to be the world's most customer-centric company. But he also reminded us that Amazon customers are just a click away from taking their business to another co company that offers them a better service. Now, notice how Jeff did not say anything about offering the best possible product selection or having the lowest prices anywhere. While these certainly are important for Amazon, the idea of a better service that wins and sustains our customers' trust is way more than that. So let's unpack this with our opening example for this session. Now, if you're like me, you also love being an Amazon Prime member because you get Prime one day and Prime the same day delivery on all your orders for free. It's not just an offer, but a promise Amazon makes with its customers. Now, this promise is really only meaningful to the customers when two things happen. First, a majority of the products that customers actually want to buy are covered under this delivery promise. And second, their online orders arrive exactly when Amazon promised that they will. So let's dive a little bit deeper into how Amazon applies machine learning and how it runs its global supply chain in order to make this happen for millions of customers every day. What you see here is a conceptual illustration of Amazon.com supply chain. Now it's vast and pretty complex. Uh, for example, Amazon handles billions of packages a year in more than 150 countries around the globe. And not only that, online retail business activities at Amazon can get really intense at times. Uh, for example, in Amazon Prime Day, which is the biggest annual sales event for Amazon Prime uh, customers, last year in 2019, Amazon received more than 175 million orders in a two and a half day period. That basically means Amazon is receiving close to 3,000 orders every minute during the event. And a lot of these orders will, be, will need to be delivered the very next day. Now, think about all the things that needs to happen behind the scenes in the supply chain to make that happen, looking at this flow going from left to right. Uh, Amazon's forecasting system have to predict the demand for the amount of items Amazon need to procure. The buying system have to determine the appropriate amount to uh, purchase and from which supplier. The placement system, which is the crux of all this, has to figure out where to place the items so they're as close to customers as possible. And last but not least, Amazon has to track where every single item is in its fast fulfillment network real time to provide an accurate delivery promise when the cu customer makes that order. So at Amazon.com scale, it simply isn't possible to run a supply chain like this using traditional methods. Now, the question that drives Amazon Prime delivery is this. How do we stock the products in the warehouse that is closest to a potential customer in order to minimize the delivery time? And to do that, an accurate forecast of the customer demand is critical to placing the right set of products in these locations because stocking every type of product Amazon sells in every one of its fulfillment centers would be impractical. Now, forecasting demand is relatively simple for items that are very predictable in usage, like everyday household products. And it's probably no brainer that your kids or mine will need sunblocks for the summer or snow boots for the winter. But the, but the vast majority of what happens in the real world isn't that simple, unfortunately. 
So for example, Amazon sells a lot of unique and special products that you cannot find elsewhere. Uh, but from a demand forecasting perspective, uh, predicting demand for these things that are unique, but also slow selling is really tough because the sales patterns are irregular and you have less historical data to work with. And predicting demand for newly launched product or highly seasonal items like Halloween customs is also almost impossible using traditional methods. And uh, let's not forget, Amazon has to deal with an additional layer of complexity that comes from its operating scale. Uh, for example, in the United States alone, there are more than 10,000 postal codes and Amazon has to forecast demand for each unique location. And also the underlying business conditions and customers buying patterns change constantly and they're unique to each countries and regions that no amount of people that we have can possibly keep up with it. So at some point, if you're taking the traditional approach to um, forecasting customer demand, you will hit the limit of just how many people or number of hours you can throw at the problem and have to start making some difficult compromises and trade-offs that ultimately limit the services and experiences you can offer your customers. And that's what Amazon found itself in. So in, in applying machine learning to build a model to get past such limitations, what Amazon set out to achieve was to apply the massive computational powers available on AWS to processing as much data as Amazon can find, possibly find and throw its way so that the machine creates a highly accurate forecasting model that vastly outperforms whatever humans can possibly program. So let's get back into the solution. The first machine learning model Amazon.com launched more than 13 years ago uh, to replace a legacy forecasting application was based on a decision tree algorithm. So think about this as if A, then B, LC type of logical structure on a rocket ship, being able to handle millions of logical decision paths across all product categories. Now this team also made it possible for the machine to get at the unstructured data, like product titles and description that added more intelligence in how the model applies its understanding of the product nuances so that it can build on the statistical insights from hundreds of similar products to generate much more accurate forecast for a given item. Now fast forward the clock 13 years. Uh, the current model uses a different approach using deep learning um, um, that is inspired by the structure of the human brain. Uh, you may recall from school days that a brain is basically a bunch of neurons interconnected into a network structure. And with such a brain, a human can look at a group of items, uh, say tank tops, maybe stun blockers for car windshields, and books that people like to read on vacations, and make an intuitive guess or connection that these are all things related to uh, things that customers might buy for summer vacation. However, uh, making such connections in accurate ways is a breakthrough for machines. And that's what, is, what it means to apply deep learning for models to forecast um, um, product demand. And that model can now identify powerful nonlinear relationships and non-obvious links to generate an even more accurate predictions. So the current model that Amazon uses is more than 15 times more accurate than the earlier models. And what this means for customers is that they will find a lot more of what they buy covered in the Amazon Prime delivery promises. Now, so the, you know, the powerful and accurate demand forecasting helps Amazon stock its fulfillment centers with the right products. Let's wrap up the supply chain example by talking about how Amazon applies machine learning to speed up the fulfillment process itself. Now, a typical facility for Amazon can ship over 700 units per minute, and it also needs to be constantly uh, re uh, be replenished with products at a similar rate. So you can imagine the speed at which products and order packages are moving around in the warehouses. Now consider this, during the order fulfillment process, if Amazon drops a package uh, or missold it so that they lose track of it for a few hours, or the package is now placed on the wrong delivery van, Amazon would more than likely end up breaking the customer promise. So Amazon applies machine learning to eliminate human errors and make fulfillment processes much more efficient. And let me just walk you through a few examples here. Uh, first, Amazon stores items in its fulfillment centers in a random fashion, because what Amazon found over time is that storing items in designated spaces is highly inefficient. 
Uh, first of all, there's a lot of wasted space when you run low on inventory. And it adds to the order fulfillment time if, let's say, two different products that you need to complete a single customer order are, are stored in the opposite corners of a huge warehouse. So Amazon stores them in, uh, randomly on random slots on random movable pods, which in this picture are the tall yellow shelving units that you see that this man in blue is reaching into. And Amazon's system can track and position these randomly stored items in ways that maximizes space usage and also make the order fulfillment speed, uh, sorry, increase the order fulfillment speed using machine learning. Now, notice the orange robots on the floor underneath the pods. These robots can lift over uh, 1,000 pounds and move around at five miles per hour. So imagine a warehouse uh, full of these robots that can lift a grand piano off the floor and run 30 laps around the soccer pitch in an hour. That's basically what these robots can do. Um, so what's interesting is that Amazon system not only orchestrate how these robots bring the pods to the person looking to pick items to complete an order on hand, but they also optimize where the pods should be placed after that based on the forecast of what future customer orders might need access to the other items in the pod over the next period in an hour or two. So all of that optimization also is powered by machine learning. And finally, when the robot brings a pod to the person, it can get a bit overwhelming for the associate to stare at a pod with dozens of slots where the item that he needs to pick might be hiding in. So Amazon uses artificial intelligence to light up the exact slot on the pod the associate should be reaching in for that specific item in the order. And that too is powered by machine learning. So you can see how Amazon applies machine learning at every step in the supply chain in order to make and keep customer delivery promises. And hopefully, you can see how Amazon cannot grow and scale the way it does without machine learning really powering its operations. Now, let's shift gear a little bit and talk about just one more example related to uh, customer orders. Um, and that's really around uh, Amazon's delivery packaging. Now, a big part of Amazon's sustainability effort also impacts Amazon's customer experience when you talk, talk about delivery packaging especially since Amazon delivers more than 10 billion items a year. So given that scale, the potential to optimize packaging and reduce waste by replacing cardboard boxes with lighter packaging is significant. Uh, flexible packaging, such as bags and mailers, use less material than similar size boxes, weigh less, and conform around the product so that it takes up less space than a box during shipping. So a few years ago, Amazon began to apply machine learning to develop the model that learns the fragility of each product and assign a packaging type that provides the necessary protection and optimize the packaging weight. Now, before this, Amazon, Amazon used to handle packaging decision exactly as you may imagine what most retailers do. So operations people in the fulfillment center floors would make the decision based on a visual inspection of the item. Um, all, you know, also, even though there are millions of data points on product damage information being generated in Amazon every day, unfortunately, most of this information was not available to these people making the packaging decision. So they're not applied in systematic ways to, to really optimize the passing packaging decision. And finally, because you cannot inspect every single one of the millions of different items available on Amazon.com with you know, an army of human beings, only a handful of time selling products were prioritized for inspection. So applying machine learning over the last, you know, past several years helped Amazon really grow past these blockers. So for one, Amazon can now uh, apply item specific and accurate packaging decision for millions of different products. This model is also able to apply the damage information that gets generated in all the packaging handling processes um, in the delivery steps and also the end customer feedback. So all of that is now applied toward the model to optimize packaging decision for each product. The bottles also are able to handle increasingly sophisticated use cases. Uh, take Legos as an example. A majority of Lego items are toys for children, but there may be certain lineups, um, say a particular product from its Star Wars series that end up becoming a collector's item 
But unfortunately, the packaging doesn't give you any clue as to whether something will eventually become a collector's item or it's just a toy. And the customers that, that order these particular Star Wars Lego items may want to receive the items in pristine product packaging condition. So the model that Amazon uses help Amazon decide that it should ship these Star Wars Legos products in boxes, while hundreds of other Lego products of similar weight and dimension and price range might actually ship in mailers. So that's the level of optimizations that you can do. And what does that mean for Amazon and its customers when you're able to do that at scale? Over the past five years, the percentage of products that Amazon ships in mailers doubled, and Amazon this year will deliver more than half the orders in mailers instead of boxes. And this model is also able to help identify opp uh, additional opportunities for Amazon to work closely with suppliers to develop product packaging that did not require additional shipping packaging from Amazon. Now, what does that mean from an environmental standpoint? Last year, last year in 2019 alone, the model identified over 400,000 products, which Amazon replay, replaced cardboard boxes with mailers. That basically meant for over 125 million customer deliveries, we were able to deliver in mailers instead of boxes. And that, when you add up, helped us prevent over 9,000 tons of waste. If you've ever been to Paris and, uh, Paris and France, 9,000 tons is close to how much the famous Eiffel Tower weighs. So that's a lot of cardboard boxes, but not, not only that, that's a lot of delivery trucks and vans off the road to avoid you know, delivering these wasteful product packaging. And that's not the end of the story. Um, over the past few years, this team has found a whole collection of new and creative ways that Amazon can um, eliminate packaging waste. Uh, so for example, they have invented a model that allows Amazon to ship in nothing but a paper bag or predict which products might leak or find products that can be folded into different sizes to fit into smaller packages. All of these packages, uh, use cases, can be launched in production for Amazon in days and weeks because the high level of automation Amazon invested in its machine learning development processes. So innovation isn't about having big ideas or applying, applying cre uh, creativity. It's also about how fast you can apply the innovation and deliver cus bigger customer results even faster using machine learning. So when I bring it all together, you know, ultimately, Amazon believes that the practical application of machine learning surfaces different opportunities to better serve its customers in each of the innovation areas um, you know, the customer promise example that I walk you through are examples of different ways that Amazon automated its core retail processes to operate with speed and scale that you expect from Amazon that simply isn't possible without machine learning. Personalization is another great example of how machine learning can deliver better movie watching experiences for Amazon Prime Video customers. And an Amazon service called StyleSnap lets customers take and upload pictures of the style that they are inspired by. And these pictures capture information they're not going to be easy to describe in words, like neckline, uh, necklines on a dress or patterns on a shirt. So the AI that powers this service allows Amazon to figure out what best matches the outfit in the picture and point them out to the customers on Amazon.com. So that's a pretty cool shopping experience. And finally, Amazon also tackles customer pain points that are systematic and are not possible to address through the incremental innovations. So this drives Amazon to invent whole new experiences like eliminating checkout lines through Amazon Go stores or using drone technology to deliver customer packages. So as you can see, Amazon has built a lot of experiences with the practical application of machine learning across all areas of its businesses and learned a ton from it. In the remaining 10 minutes that we have here, I want to focus your attention on what Amazon has found to be the most important things to get right first in the machine learning journey. And to do that, let's start first with a broader perspective that come out from outside of Amazon. What you see here is a result of a recent Gartner survey to top business and technology leaders in different companies and organizations around the globe. And Gartner asked these leaders about the different uh, challenges they saw that are blocking their team's progress on the machine learning initiatives. So please take a moment to scan the result. 
And what the data is telling me is this. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of energy and excitement when a team sees an opportunity to learn and apply new and powerful technologies to solve customer problems. But that energy quickly dissipates as the teams get stuck trying to understand where and how they should get started, or perhaps realize that the required skill set just isn't there in the organization, or find that the data that's needed for the model is all over the place or trapped in organizational silos. And perhaps some of this is what you might be seeing in your teams today. So let's see how Amazon's insight can help you address some of these blockers from the lessons that Amazon learned. And what Amazon found is that there are many things that deserve your attention, but these five tend to be the most common and foundational ones. And there's a bit of a sequence to it. So when you go from left to right on this graphic, first, you know that you need to align the organization toward a common ambition and vision toward machine learning. Then you de define the mission and organize the right team around it. And that gets you started. But pretty quickly, you have to make sure that you're enabling the teams and you're applying the right set of data to build the models to solve the specific problems that you have set up for. And through these efforts, your team start to build the capabilities and confidence that generate real momentum. And the ability to build on that momentum is really the key to accelerating and scaling your machine learning practices in your enterprises. Now, you don't need to tackle all of these at once, but it's really important to proactively remove the blockers that surface in the journey that slow down your team's progress. So let's begin by talking about building the right mindset and culture around machine learning in the Amazon Teams. There's probably many different paths that you can imagine that you can take to align an organization toward a common mission. What Amazon found with its teams is that asking the right question is often one of the simplest but the most powerful way to help jumpstart innovation. Now, this here is a question which Amazon asks of every product or service team as a starting question in the annual strategic planning processes at Amazon. So it's being asked of hundreds and thousands of teams across all lines of business at Amazon, all services and functions within those lines of businesses within Amazon. And now the answer to who is the customer might be different for each of these teams. But what is most important is that the team, um, you know, through the process, they're able to articulate the compelling customer benefit that defines success and explain how they will deliver that using machine learning. And it's also a powerful process through which the business and technology executives evaluating these strategies get to really understand the implications uh, for their businesses and their teams. So it really forces them to roll up their sleeves and really help them understand what is machine learning. And this clear understanding is critical to get and sustain these executives' top-down support for these machine learning uh, initiatives. Now, good intentions and alignment across the leadership and the working team might get you started. But what Amazon found is that hardwiring the right behaviors and effective ways of working uh, into the team model is very important. The way that Amazon organizes for machine learning success is to bring the business and technology experts together into the product team and orient them toward defining and solving for tangible business problems. Now, Amazon found over time that because building deep business knowledge is so critical to these technical experts, and on the converse, understanding the machine learning domain is so important for the business partners, bringing the business and technology experts together into the team is not optional, but a non-negotiable requirement to build successful product teams that achieve machine learning success. Uh, and, you know, there's no mandate at Amazon to use AWS services. Each Amazon team can choose whichever tool or solution that best meets its needs. Frankly, even if it's a third-party alternative to a solution that AWS provides. And when you look across Amazon, you see teams using different homegrown machine learning platforms they developed for a very long time, as well as new teams that are just starting out their machine learning journey using an AWS service. Now, it, it, irrespective of whether they're using an AWS branded tool or something else, uh, what is most important that they have found is that teams are choosing the best tool for the job. 
so for example, the teams that have clear use cases they're trying to solve for where pre-built AI or machine learning capabilities can be plugged in without a lot of technical expertise in the team can achieve substantial customer benefits quickly with AWS AI services at the top of the stack. And these are things like speech recognition, transcriptions, language translations, forecasting and recommendation use cases, image processing, and text analytics. And there are many Amazon teams that are starting out their journeys and applying these services to power their customer products and services. On the other hand, there are many Amazon teams as well that have been able to build deep scientist and engineering skills around machine learning. And these teams need access to the underlying frameworks and infrastructure components and can take advantage of the control and flexibility at these lower levels that Air AWS services can also provide. So it's not about finding the tools with the most bells and whistles, but it's really about applying the right tool for the right job. Now let's talk about data for a minute. It's a broad domain, and you probably don't need me to talk to you at length about why it's important. However, I just want to share a couple of big, uh, perspectives that I think would help you think through what you might want to solve for as a priority when you think about machine learning. What we found at Amazon is more than 50% of the machine learning team's time, if not more than that for many teams, are spent in you know, data management. So that's finding, piping, cleaning, and you know, staging all the data. And all of that before data can even be usable for machine learning. And this means that there's a much less time that teams have left you know, after all of that, that they can actually focus on innovation. And also restricting the team's choices on the analytical platforms and data tools that they need were really limiting the team's abilities to experiment creatively uh, in creative ways and launch new ideas quickly. So when Amazon modernized this enterprise data warehouse platform a few years ago, uh, on the data lake they built on top of AWS, there are several things that are trying set out to get right. First is that uh, it's a bit of a, a mental model. Amazon sees the teams that are working closest to the customers being in the best possible position to innovate on behalf of its customers. So Amazon supports this concept of innovation at the edge by providing powerful data set and flexible toolkit at these teams to, at these teams' disposal in massively scaled ways. And what this also meant was that Amazon wanted to make sure that these teams are able to dive deep into this data lake and easily find the exact data they're looking for and bring them into their choice of data platforms and analytical tools in the simplest way possible for these teams. So the way that Amazon teams are able to search for data and subscribe to them on this platform is very similar to how Amazon.com's retail customers are able to find products on Amazon.com and create a recurring delivery order. Uh, so the Amazon data warehouse functions less like a massive collection of data silos, but truly in a rich and you know, active marketplace-like you know, model where data is shared across the enterprise in simple but powerful ways. Now, let's talk about choosing the right first project. Most organizations that are starting out on the machine, machine learning um, the, the initial set of investment and focused effort to get them moving can be quite substantial. And because of that, how you plan your initial machine learning project for success becomes even more critical. What you want to make sure is that what you deliver first out of the gate by the team is done with speed and also has real substance. Now, these are not hard and fast rules or enterprise standards at Amazon, but these are reflect some of the most commonly considered factors when Amazon makes this decision about the first project. You know, we want to make sure that machine learning unlocks significant new capabilities for the organization. And this means that if there's a problem where a, the traditional approaches can solve for 90% of the use case, that's not where you want to invest in machine learning. Now, six to 10 months may not help a team achieve the full business case on their very first machine learning effort, but we want to make sure that what the team achieves in that time is substantial enough to provide real-world evidence of the differentiated customer value so that it generates real excitement and momentum for the organization. And this earns the sustained attention and support from your stakeholders that further accelerates the timeline and scale. And let's finally talk about scaling. Uh, here's some insights from a recent Gartner C CIO survey that says 
that organizations expect to double the number of AI and machine learning projects next year, but expect less than half of these to make it into production. And what this tells me is that in reality, most organizations struggle to scale these pilot efforts into the enterprise-wide production. And that limits the ability for the companies to realize the full business value of machine learning and struggle to reach the you know, return on investment it envisioned in their initial business case. So this is the final concept I'm going to cover before rounding out the lessons learned. You read this graphic counterclockwise, and I already went over many things related to how Amazon.com solved for in terms of culture, organization, enablement, and how they prioritize customer outcomes. But there are several remaining blockers that many Amazon teams are also trying to remove as they evolve further and become more mature. So teams that are leveraging an end-to-end -end production platform like Amazon SageMaker are not only reaping benefits of eliminating a lot of manual steps in their machine learning journey, but they're also able to encode a lot of machine learning practices and they automate compliance checks and audits into the machine learning platforms. And being able to achieve that is kind of the last mile, but that's the key to these teams' ability to launch new innovation ideas and use cases into production in matters of days and weeks. And being able to do so helps Amazon truly transform its customer experiences every single day through the practical application of machine learning. So here we are. This is the end of my session. I hope that you found the walkthrough of Amazon's use cases and insights to be helpful learning experiences for you and a good investment of your time with me today. And I hope that this helps you think bigger uh, in think, think in bigger ways toward uh, your customer opportunities and the, the ways that you can apply machine learning to help deliver better customer uh, service for your customers and be more successful in that journey. For those of you who are looking to learn more about Amazon's approach to innovation at scale, there are six other topics available as a part of innovation track at this year's uh, AWS reInvent and these will be available online. So please check them out. If you're interested in having a deeper conversation with the digital innovation team at AWS about any of these topics, please contact your AWS account teams. My name is Chung Lee, and it's been a pleasure to share some learning, learnings from Amazon.com today with you. Hope you enjoy the rest of the AWS uh, reInvent experiences. Thank you.